Time now for a look at what's making headlines here in France, and we can say good morning to Deepti Calderon. Hi, Delano. How are you doing? Good, thanks. Good. Uh, well, we're starting out with the agricultural fair that's underway here in Paris, the Salon de l'Agriculture. That's right, the famous Salon de l'Agriculture that takes place in February each year. It's always, uh, as it always gets political as well, and uh, ministers and opposition ministers are always trying to outdo each other in terms of uh, meeting as many farmers as possible and trying to lend support to what is a very struggling sector in France. It also often descends into farce with people, uh, especially farmers, uh, throwing, heckling uh, politicians, that kind of thing. We've seen throwing that in the eggs. past. Throwing eggs, throwing flour. Mm -hmm. Sometimes prime uh, presidents do respond back, in, as has been the case in the past. Anyway, uh, this year, of course, was Emmanuel Macron's first visit. He visited on the as weekend president. as president, that's yeah. right. Uh, his prime minister, Edouard Philippe, headed to the fair yesterday for his inaugural visit as prime minister for what uh, Le Figaro calls a pretty smooth sailing day. Libé says he took numerous selfies with some kids, drank some wine at 10 in the morning, which is often uh, the case when you go to this agricultural fair. As we do it in France. Huh? <laughs> As we do it in France. <laughs> and then met with an impressive number of farm animals brought into the city from the countryside, specifically for the fair. He also made a point to drink milk, I quote, in front of the cameras. Clearly, uh, for uh, Liberation in this article, they're pretty cynical about the Prime Minister's visit. Not a fan of milk. Okay, <laughs> moving on next. Now, the Prime Minister was also careful to avoid Laurent Wauquiez, the leader of the Conservative Party, who was also at the fair. That's right, his arch enemy, I guess you could say. He did indeed uh, uh, sort of schedule his visit, so he, the two men avoided bumping into each other. And this is where it really does get political because Laurent Vauquier uh, made it a point to show how familiar he is with the rural sector, saying, I quote, it's a world that I know well and that Emmanuel Macron doesn't know at all, trying to highlight this country bumpkin versus arrogant city dweller dichotomy. For Le Figaro, though, Vauquier has made too much of a show, so clearly uh, politicians do need to strike a very delicate balance when they attend this show. Now, Liberation is wondering how the animals cope with all this media attention. <laughs> it must be a slow news day, here, guys, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> uh, because uh, it must be said, Libé's article is a little bit tongue-in-cheek. But yes, it is very cold here in France, across the continent. So how are the animals doing with this cold snap? Well, one farmer, rather, uh, with a wink in his eye, responded by saying that the real shock for them was rather being in this hall under all those lights, being constantly uh, petted by the public uh, and all the noise. That's what really shocked them most. One rabbit breeder noted that his furry creatures actually lose about 700 grams during the fair because of the stress, which kind of makes the fair sound a little bit uh, n not supporting animal rights, I guess. There are a lot of people at the Salon de l'Agriculture, it should be said. Now, on top of that, there's a cold snap here in France. We all feel it. Um, Many are wondering how, how to go about protecting the homeless. This is a big question. It always comes up during periods of extreme weather in France, whether it is a cold snap or a heat wave. Already uh, a handful of homeless people have frozen to death during France's cold snap, which really in 2018 is just unacceptable. On this question, La Croix, the Catholic paper, has put forward a pro and counter argument about whether French authorities should force homeless people into refuges to protect them during periods of extreme weather. Now, uh, it is a controversial topic. Uh, one NGO leader uh, argues that they shouldn't have the right to do that because it's dehumanizing. Why should we force homeless people into doing something they don't want to do? Christophe uh, Robert writes in La Croix that it comes from a place of, quote, formidable hypocrisy that authorities are only concerned about the homeless during cold snaps or heat waves. In favor of the measure, though, is a Belgian local leader whose own commune has installed this rule recently. He says it's not about depriving someone of their liberty, but rather preventing a health catastrophe. On to a bit of uh, cinema news next. And the Oscars are a couple of days away, four days away, in fact. Uh, and Le Monde has interviewed one of the best actor nom nominees. That's right. His name is Timothy Chalamet. He's a Franco-American, so I guess the French can take a little bit of credit for him, even though he did grow up in the States. Uh, Hollywood has found its new darling. That's what Le Monde says in this article. He is a 22-year-old with, quote, rebel-like hair, and an air of James Dean about him, perhaps a 21st century James Dean. He's starring in the Oscar-nominated film Call Me By Your Name about a young man.